Uh, so it's just like, all right, uh, let's take a road trip to the other kingdom and uh, get this dude uh, tied, uh, uh, tied, like uh, engaged or whatever. <laughs> to you, tie the knot. I, I liked you trying That's to. What I was yeah, going for, yeah, I, yeah I knew what you were trying to. Uh, welcome to the Get Games Podcast. My name is James. I'm Leo. And I'm John. Uh, today, uh, we are talking about Final Fantasy XV. Um, this is a game that launched a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> uh, and my only playthrough of it, my only complete playthrough of it, was right at launch. Uh, and I know this game has gotten a bunch of updates and stuff. Um and now whatever the royale edition is out on pc and i did i played like the first i don't know a couple hours of it just to see if there were any significant differences it seems like the same game to me that i played at launch like it, it is not noticeably different hmm. just like more enemies maybe or something i i don't i i mean i guess the big thing is there's this whole multiplayer thing that they added which i didn't engage with at all i guess they changed up some of the combat i guess I don't, I don't it seemed the same uh, i guess you can switch characters now but i either d- didn't press the right button to do that or i didn't get far enough into the game where it allows you to do that i don't know it seemed like exactly the same game hmm. uh, uh yeah uh so w- did you, okay uh did you guys also play this game at launch yes okay john yep okay uh so what okay let's talk a little bit about our history with final fantasy because i think that's uh somewhat relevant so i i i kind of became a big final fantasy fan around the like playstation era right uh and then went back and played a lot of the older ones um by the time final fantasy 15 had come out i had played most if not every single game in the series so i more or less knew what i was getting into um i think john you're a little more of a, a a newer final fantasy fan was this your first final fantasy no way um, no, I actually have played some of the other ones based off of your recommendations, but way past oh. the, the, the release dates of, of those games. So this is actually probably my first Final Fantasy game that I played all the way through. Oh, well, that's interesting because um, I, I, I forgot the title screen. Like that was one of their like marketing points and it's even still on the title screen of the game. It's like a Final Fantasy for fans and first timers. Right. The new generation of Final Fantasy players and stuff. Yeah. I remember them marketing that. Yeah, uh, Leo, I think you're a little bit more in my camp where you had played most of the games, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the first game I played was Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was a lot of people's first Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and I mean, this game had had a hell of a development cycle. Uh, oh, yeah. We, this, heard, we first saw like a teaser of this yeah. game, like, what, 11 years before it released? E, like, it was like... 2007 or 2008 when we first saw this game and it was it was part of the final fantasy 13 whatever the hell they called it then nobula fabula fabula crystallis whatever it was part of the final fantasy 13 universe but yeah yeah, it was called 13 verses 13 verses yep uh and this (laughs) eventually got relaunched as final fantasy 15 so uh by the time this came out you know I've been waiting for this game for a while. Uh, I was, I don't know. Cause I, <laughs> I had a real, real, real problems with the last game in the series, by which I don't mean Final Fantasy 14. I'm talking about Final Fantasy 13. I, I kind of skip over 11 and 14. Yeah. Uh, 13. Um, I did not finish that game. I hated that game to this date. It is the only video game I've ever returned I went back to the store and I was like, no, nah, actually, this game is trash. I can't uh, play this shit. Yeah. I, I didn't have that visceral of a reaction to 15. It, I didn't hate it. I didn't, you know, it was just kind of eh? different, maybe, than what yeah, you expected. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> what what did you think, Leah? What was your what was your initial gut reaction to playing? My, this yeah, game? my I mean that's kind of where I'm coming from. My initial gut reaction was it was very it was a very different uh, Final Fantasy, and like coming from, like from the fact that like I had 
I was pretty familiar with Final Fantasy fourteen and everything. I felt like it made it a little bit easier to to play this game because it was more sort of open worldy and um, you know almost like a single player MMO. You know, yeah. So so it was just very different from like I'm I'm used to Final Fantasies being a little bit more traditional JRPG, and this one, this is just a different flavor of things. So yeah, I mean, but it was good. It just wasn't, I guess, what I'm used to. Yeah, it's it's very much a modern game. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I was playing, uh, like I said, I was playing the Royale edition um, to prepare for this, which, first of all, um, it looks really, really good on PC. Uh, mm. uh, I, I don't want to take, you know, that, that's one of the pluses is, and I mean, it even looked great. I think what it launched as a PlayStation 3 game, right? Or was it PS4? No, no it was PS4. PS4 yeah. It was PS4. It was PS4. It was PS4. Yeah. Um, uh yeah i mean it looked great on ps4 but it looks especially good at on my pc you know running at 60 frames per second and blah 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 blah. but um yeah game looks great um i think a lot of what final fantasy 15 is was i I think one of the design goals was to first of all make like a quote-unquote modern final fantasy right but also i think a lot of what final fantasy 15 is is a response to a lot of the backlash and criticisms of Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah. Because if you remember XIII, like, people tore that game apart for being too uh, linear. I, I don't remember XIII, James, because every time I tried <laughs> to play XIII, you, like, shunned me from playing it. Like, you actively tried, like, you would tell me not to play that game. Yeah. That was bad. Out of my hands. At one I, point, I James was trying to save you. James threatened to break up with me from best friendhood. If I played 13, I swear to God, that's what he said. I was doing it in your own best interest, Leo. I was trying to save you. I will not be your friend if you play that game. That's what he said. I really, honest to God, and I, you know, I've I've played a lot of video games. I I sometimes I go and I intentionally seek out like bad video games, like bootleg thing, like just bad. Final Fantasy 13, it may not be one of the worst games I've played, but it's certainly one of the most disappointing. It was just, Mm. anyway... Uh, all this to say, um, I, I, I think a lot of the direction that Final Fantasy XV went, especially with like the open world stuff, was a response to the criticisms of how linear thirteen was, just you know, walking straight down that hallway. And yeah. also, I remember you remember the opening trailer to thirteen, where like lightning is like doing backflips through a train and like. Yeah. Killing all these soldiers, and yeah. everyone was like, "Wow, this cutscene's amazing! Wow, this looks so cool!" And then the battles battle system of thirteen starts, and you just kind of watch the game play itself, and nothing <laughs> interesting. And it's right. just like numbers, numbers just pop up on your screen, and you're like, "What? What the hell?" Mm-hmm. And everyone was like, "Oh man, I wish the battle system looked like the cutscene I just watched." And that's kind of what they pulled Th- off. I think that's what yeah. they were going for in fifteen yeah. because, yeah. like. <laughs> it's weird it's like uh the battles like look incredible like they spent a ton of time making these battles look really fluid and um i don't know just really dynamic and exciting looking i don't know if they're that fun to actually play but they look really good some of that adds entertainment value for sure i mean it's, it's yeah. shallow but it's there yeah. um john i'm kind of curious how yeah, many, what was your reaction to this, yeah, John? Because I know you generally like things that are newer and are more kind of like visually impressive, like out of us three. So, yeah. how did you yeah, feel? I that? could chime in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> my only exposure to anything Final Fantasy, uh, or well, I shouldn't say my only, my first exposure is Kingdom Hearts, and I think uh, fifteen kind of hit the um, the itch that Kingdom Hearts did for me. Yeah, where, it's like, close. It's the, very similar. The combat system is very similar. Yeah. And uh, I think I like that a lot. But yeah, it's one of, it's like what you guys were saying. It's just like, it looks really impressive, but you don't feel like you're doing much to make those <laughs> yeah. things happen. So it's yeah. just like, it's a, it's an improvement from 13 for sure, but it's not like, like I don't need to blink everywhere to make me feel important. You know? Now, I mean, do you guys like agree with me if, if I were to say that I think, and this is just based on speculation, having not played 13, but I think mm. that 13 was almost like, a stepping stone to 15 for them. Like it was them trying to experiment with getting away from the way they normally do things. Actually, really, I think 12 started it, but then like ultimately 15 is kind of the, uh, 
you know, like where they landed, but like it seems like 12 and 13 were like a progression towards that, towards what 15 ultimately was. Yeah, 15 was sort of the same thing as 12, like in in the same era of like, what is popular right now? Oh, um, big open world games. Let's do that. Well, they're they're trying to stay marketable, you know? I know, but I I think uh, it, it, it is simultaneously a strength and a weakness of that game, I think. Um, uh, okay, so I I think it's a strength because, first of all, if, if there's one thing 15 nails, I think it's, it's visuals. Um, like, the game looks incredible. And truly, driving... Uh, so, a lot of 15 is framed as, like, uh, okay, we're, we're having this big epic road trip with four buddies and we're all going to drive across the countryside and get from point A to point B and that's Final Fantasy XV. Or at least the that's the whatever elevator pitch, I guess, or the, the opening of the game is, is that. It becomes not that, but uh, the opening parts of the game are just like this big long road trip. And going through this big, huge, um, fleshed out open world in your car, like... That works. It, it's like, oh wow, this world's. If you if you if you're just sticking to the roads and driving down, the the illusion of how big the world is works because you're not going out into the fields and seeing how really empty Bearing they are. Where this land it is. Yeah. There, there's just no, and that's what I, it's simultaneously a strength. But if you like, just you know, don't look at it too hard and just kind of imagine. <laughs> use your imagination. Yeah. yeah. Like wow, this world's probably really big and fleshed yeah. out. But if you yeah. actually start walking around in these big open, there's just nothing there, and yeah. that's what's disappointing about this game. It's actually like, lived in, right? Like why? Why did you make this big, huge open world if there's nothing in it? Like there's nothing to explore. Like the the only time you go out into these fields are to hunt your whatever bounty targets, and like when you're doing that, there's just a point on your radar so you're just going in a straight line to that point on your radar and then once you do that you're just going on a straight line to your point back to the base or back to the car or whatever like yeah. it's not you're not taking advantage of this big open world that you made you know mm-hmm. almost seems like they kind of missed the mark on uh on what a, a good open world game is yeah yeah um I don't know. The first big open world game that comes to my mind that like really does it well is Breath of the Wild. And that works so well because they encourage exploration so much. Right. Because you can just like you can just like turn off the fucking radar in Breath of the Wild and just go explore. And that is not only fun, but probably the most fun you will have in Breath of the Wild because there's so many interesting things to find in that world. And it really rewards you for exploring and, and just looking around and, you know, yeah, you got to put those t- types of like, you know, like explorative kind of tidbits for people to find when they're exploring. Yeah. The and stuff. Well, yeah. And 15 just doesn't ha- yeah. is just, it's just empty. It's just big yeah. and empty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So, so yeah. So did you guys finish the game mm-hmm. as far as like a yes. story? Did it end well? I I don't think I even finished this one. Oh, you didn't finish oh, this game, no. John. Oh, dude. John. so I'll, I'll let John. John, I know you are. You have you're you're coming down with some sort of cold, or you're getting over a cold, and I know you don't want to talk too much. But I would like you to explain your thoughts on the story and specifically the ending of this game. All right. So first of all, if you covered like the the main game loop, which is like going from point a to point b in this car and it's like a, like a group of guys and it's fun and they go camping and bounty hunting and stuff and it's just like yeah like that's cool and everything but like what's the real story and apparently like there's like this pre uh like this uh content that you can get like some anime or some movie or something that you can watch and it explains oh, I watched that. like full-length yeah, feature yeah. film yeah oh it's a whole film yeah, yeah. I didn't watch uh, that. There's, there's a whole thing where um, when I first got the game, I got like the special edition version that came with the metal case and the full length feature film. Mm. And I kept telling mm-hmm. Taryn about how it came with the full length feature film. It's not just like a demo. It's like a full length feature film. And she about slapped me across the head and said, stop saying full length feature film. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, it came with that. 
Um, all I know from that film apparently covers like there's these two kingdoms and Noctis is like the heir to one of them, and mm-hmm. the other one is like some mysterious kingdom that's gonna like is at war with the other one, and then Noctis is supposed to apparently supposed to be apparently getting married to the heir to that kingdom, so there's gonna be this alliance. And so, uh, yeah, he's the whole reason. The reason he's going on this road trip is to meet up with this uh, potential girl and yeah, being just really to her. weird. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I I watched I watched Leo the full length feature film ah, yeah. and the and every episode of the anime. I was like into it because I wanted to. I could not fucking tell you anything. I mean, I watched him two years ago. I could not fucking tell you anything about that movie. I don't remember any of it. I couldn't tell you anything about the anime. I mean, I guess it's like character building stuff, I guess. I don't know. It was, yeah, it was mostly background stuff. It wasn't even really like relevant. That was such a fucking bad decision because like, oh, okay, especially, okay, the, the, the movie is supposed to establish uh, all, all of this like world building that like Noctis is the prince of this kingdom and Luna Freya is the fucking of some fucking other king. I don't fucking know. Uh, but it, it does it does all this heavy lifting and um, like exp- and familiarizes you with Noctis and his royal family and some of the other characters. And the game expects you to have seen this movie because about uh, an hour into the game, there's this big event. Uh, whatever, it's the first hour of the game. The like kingdom gets destroyed and Noctis's father is killed. Mm-hmm. And like, if you don't know what that kingdom is or who Noctis's father is, like, there's this big whole tragic scene where Noctis is like breaking down and his friends are trying to comfort him, and he's like, "No, guys, this is a disaster." That scene is so fucking incomprehensible if you haven't, if you didn't like watch all of these other dumb fucking ancillary. Uh, like I, movies and anime it, that scene doesn't read it just reads as like what the fuck is happening right now yeah <laughs> i lo- i did not see it so i was like okay i guess this is a big deal huh and then it was short-lived and no one <laughs> talked about it after like five oh, minutes yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The, this game i love the idea so like that road trip idea where it's like four friends on a road trip and we're gonna do i love that idea i want a game where 100% of the game is just four friends on a road trip. And that's about the first, I don't know, like maybe first like one to five hours of Final Fantasy XV is exactly that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it quickly becomes not that because they are, the story becomes this weird thing about like uh, it's just two kingdoms and they're warring and there's political backstabbing and there's this guy who's a villain but he may not be a villain there's crystals there's magic and there's big summons and shit i ah it it was it just it went from like zero to up its own ass so fast like (laughs) faster than any other final i know final fantasy is a series that tends to go up its own ass but like this was like first couple hours i was like hey i think i can get down with this and then like we went from zero to crazy so fucking fast well, it's because they know what the fans really want their fans I, does anyone want, want that ass. yeah man um, ultimately they do that's why you're playing final fantasy you're not playing uh, final road trip with friends yeah but you're... that's what that's what i was sold on that's all the marketing was okay, i was well, sold you should on go that. play euro road trip simulator 2018 <laughs> I guess I should. Final Fa- the true Final Fantasy 15, Euro Road Trip Simulator 15. <laughs> uh, sorry, John. I think I cut you off on your story explanation. Did were you? Did you? Does it end well? Uh, I, no, you 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 provided some much needed backstory because, like, like yeah. I said, I didn't see any of that anime stuff. Uh, so. It's it's forgettable. I mean, it does a lot of heavy lifting, but it's forgettable. And it. But how does the they, story I, continue then? Does it go well? I left off at like the summon that comes and you kill it and stuff and and then we're good like the story continues well characters develop so, it gets even dumber go yeah. ahead John. uh so should we give a spoiler uh oh, yeah. thing spoiler. sure if if you if you are someone who has not played final fantasy 15 and you have the mental capacity to understand what the fuck is going on in this story then spoiler warning okay okay so uh yeah, like like James was saying, like for some reason it just evolves into like crazy kingdom warring into like we're just taking a road trip at this point and we're gonna hopefully see Luna Freya eventually. 
and then there's this guy who's apparently a villain and is not a villain at the same time. And you're like, who's right. the bad guy in the series? And no, he just keeps like, showing no up. He's like, hey, we're friends. Yeah. So yeah. it like it follows that uh, path down a bit, and you try to find out like who this guy is, and uh, he's apparently the villain, and. Um, the whole story Surprise. takes a Surprise. really weird left He's turn. not even, yeah, but sorry, I'm going to cut you off again. The, he, <laughs> like, his introduction scene is, like, the most obvious, like, I am a villain, ooh, like, scene. Because he, like, walks up, and it's, like, the most ominous music starts playing, and then right. he, he, like, says all these cryptic things, like, oh, the, like, the fairy isn't running, looks like you won't go where, know where to go, and then our... People are like, "What? I'm sorry. Do I know you?" And he's like, "Oh, maybe you do. Maybe you don't." Ooh, I like and I'm like, "What? Now. This is the dumb. What is You're this?" You're not even exaggerating, James. That's exactly how it goes down. Yeah, and like even for me, I'm like, uh, "This is this is definitely one of the worst films in any video game I've ever seen." <laughs> he's like, he's also like, I, from what I understand of the story, which is admittedly very little, because I can't be bothered to understand which kingdoms are what and the magic and whatever the bullshit. He seems to have like nothing to do with the story. <laughs> He's like the villain. And he has like, I, I, I can't even remember what his motivations are or what he's even trying to do. Try to take I think over he's the world. trying to be ruler of both kingdoms in the end somehow is that that's how it plays out. Oh, he's and like Final um, Fantasy yeah, little finger. Yeah, he basically, yeah, he's basically Littlefinger, and, like, Littlefinger is, like, the, this most irrelevant character in this whole series, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, the story takes a super weird left turn, in my opinion. Yes, it does. Uh, it, yeah. Like, some, there's some time traveling that gets involved, and, like... Wait, there was time traveling? I totally missed that! Oh, I or, forgot! Yeah, you don't remember Luna Freya dies at some point, before oh, the ending? Oh, God. And is that what happens? Yeah, so so Luna Freya dies, uh, uh-huh. and I think that's actually a, a fairly decent early on in the game, like two thirds in or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm. And um, the whole world gets covered in darkness. Apparently, oh yeah, it's not like time travel; it's like a time skip. It's a like time you, skip, right? So you 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 fast forward like what five or ten years into the future or something like that. It's like it's like ten years. It's a decent yeah. time skip. Yeah, and, the end oh, of the yeah, game. And then yeah, doesn't he show up with like a beard or something? Yes, yeah, yes. I remember that part. I remember yes. that part. Yeah, and then, uh, like, so the, for some reason, it's night all the time. Like, you lost, apparently, as a, as a, as a player, as a protagonist. Yeah. And for some reason, you have this chance 10 years in the future to fight uh, the main guy. To make it all better. And but it's you, not even Arden, is it? It's not Arden. You fight somebody else, right? No, it's Arden, but he transforms into something else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> classic. Okay, all right. Yeah. And then that sounds really then, boring, guys. And then you go back <laughs> in time bad. at the end, though. There is it's a time bad. travel. Is there? Okay, whatever. I don't remember. So you kill Arden and you're able to like reverse time and Luna Freya lives or something? Yeah, I, I don't know if they just bake that into the story so you can switch between both worlds if you wanted to. At the end of the here's, here's the other fucking bizarre thing about this game, and I know they have done this. Since launch, they have patched in not only like new gameplay features, like I was talking about with the multiplayer, they have patched in like major cutscenes and like major story moments that they have packaged like paywalled behind DLC. Really? So it's like, oh, you want to find out what happens to Arden? Well, give us five bucks. You want you want to find out what what Ignis was doing in this one scene? Oh, that's another five bucks. Like, oh, well, that's like the gay porn. So of course, oh, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, pay for it, that one. It, B- b- between the like paywall DLC story episodes and the movie and the anime, there is like probably it's too much. Like so, absolutely too much. And like even one of those would be like fragmenting and splintering your 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 story into. Uh, it's bad. It's just bad. Like why? I, why? Why? Hmm. It's bad. Hmm. Interesting. So it's like the. Not as bad as thirteen, but it's like it's it's some parts of this are bad and just it's, it's fragmentation of the story, and uh, I like kind of almost like a lack of identity. It's kind of yeah, it's it's super duper super unfocused, uh, yeah. especially story wise. Because I, I, I guess you're right. I I honestly I don't remember Luna Freya. She's in. She's like ostensibly like one of the main players in this story, and she's in the game like a, a total of like five fucking minutes. Oh yeah, you like, barely ever her, see her. Yeah, yeah. 
her screen time is like nothing. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I remember at the end of the game, you 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 beat the final boss and whatever. Which, by the way, the ending of the game. Speaking of being unfocused, the end of the game, one of the final chapters, the game legit becomes a horror game. Do you remember what? that, John? Where where you're just you're going through these like dark corridors and like all these zombie things like jump out and go blah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I know why this is here because like all of the like dumb YouTube reaction videos to horror games are really popular right now, and that's why that's in this game because they want <laughs> the like viral video marketing of like teens going oh my god right. to the ending of this game. It's so, again, out of left field and, like, so out of place. That, that had to be the most universally hated chapter. And I heard they patched that ever since. Everyone yeah, really I, hated it. Really. I, I, couldn't, I could not be bothered to play the game far enough to get back to that chapter to see what was different about Man, it. But what a um, bummer. It, it was bad at launch. But anyway, you beat the final big bad boss, and then, like, you're like, wow, the end. And then it, like, goes back to the title screen, and you see the logo for the game. And then the like camera zoom pulls back, and then like Luna Freya like fades in over the logo, and now she's a part of the logo. And I was like, I, "What? What? 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 Actually, what? <laughs> like, uh, it? It's the That's ending of creepy. the the ending of the game is just so densely impenetrable. Uh, densely impenetrable really, really sad, is a great actually. band name." Yeah, it's it's weird to think because this game was in development from like for like ten years, right. and it somehow still feels like rushed and incomplete even after like ten years. That especially the ending of the game, I was like, what did they just like give them two seconds to like wrap up all the loose ends? Like the the pacing of the end of the game See, is like so bad. It's and the same problem very, Game of Thrones is having. It's very Game of Thrones season eight. There's yeah. like weird pacing issues at yeah. the end of Final and like Fantasy 15. rushed endings and stuff. See, this is you bad. know yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the ending for Game of Thrones is a similar ending to this uh, game, where it's just extremely sad, extremely dense, and left leaves nothing to be desired at all. And maybe even yeah. some weird time travel because I th I still am on that theory. Oh, that they like time travel back and they kill baby Daenerys. Well, maybe not exactly like that, but I'm sure Bran will show up and be like, <laughs> I live most of my days in the past, and it's because he's, like, changing things or something, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the ending of this game is bad. The, the, the best this game ever is is the first few hours, where it's just, just, like, four friends just taking a road trip through this beautiful countryside. I, I was will like, say yeah. this much. I will say this much, just to... to uh, strengthen that theory um i spent i think close to 50 hours in final fantasy 15 and mm -hmm. um in terms of story development stuff i didn't get much farther than than that just kind of the road trip stuff i just was going around mm -hmm. killing things i spent so much time in that game and got nowhere in the story just because i was just going around killing stuff and enjoying the boys yeah. enjoying the road trip and yeah, that's and that's for... really that's really kind of the best part of this game is just the like goofy like banter that they have and like camping and like at the the like little moments they have when they're talking to each other when they're camping. Yeah. And the and and the blonde chick, the Sid chick. What is her name? The uh, Oh, Cindy, yeah. And Cindy. That's yeah. also a good part. Oh, of the I, game. By the way, you never see Cindy ever again. Well, that's sad. Well, you can if you like drive back to that area, but she's not really in the rest of the game yeah, i drove really. back many times oh, i bet you did <laughs> i was gonna say um by the way when they camp uh and w uh, what's his name ignis uh uh cooks food for everyone yeah ah uh, how delicious did that food look that they like that's probably the best part the of the entire game yeah what the fuck the food in that game looks so good that's I 10 years of food of development right there the i know that's years, bro <laughs> that's what they spent all of their time and money on was making that food look delicious like i want to eat every single meal yeah, that he prepares for sure yeah for sure looks so good final fantasy is a series that is always noted for its music um Oh yeah. What, what did you What did you guys think of the soundtrack, real quick? I uh, don't remember it. Okay, that's kind of a hot minute, but I thought it was excellent from what I can oh, remember really? of it. 
Um, I was sort of mixed on the soundtrack. So the, it was, the was soundtrack good. was. I think I remember thinking. Yes, I, I, yeah, I was gonna say uh, Yoko Shimomura did the soundtrack. She's she's uh, another um, whatever composing legend. This is not her best work, but there there are some good songs. I like the battle theme a lot. I and this is not Yoko Shimomura. I hate the main theme of the game. Hmm. Do you remember what the main theme of the game of Final Fantasy Fifteen is? No, go ahead and sing it for me. It's stand by me. You know, when the lights go down, da 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 was you stand, stand by me. That's the theme of Final Fantasy 15. I That's shit ridiculous. you not. I don't I shit you not. And I do kind of remember I, that though, yeah. I hate and this was not Shimamura. I'm I'm not dissing Shimamura here. This was I think they they hired like um um uh uh fuck, what is the name of that band? Florence and the Machine? Yeah, Florence and the Machine. They got Florence and the Machine. I was like, okay, yeah, maybe. But then the Florence and the Machine c- covered Stand By Me mm. as the main theme. Like, ah, uh, it's. I just strongly dislike having a, uh, like a pop song, like a actual, like legit pop song that yeah. is. You know what I'm trying to say. I yeah, dislike I mean, that a again, lot. The, the whole thing is they're just trying to market themselves. It's really. That's all this yeah. whole thing feels like to me is just one giant marketing campaign. Yeah, it's uh, a very unfocused one at yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, final verdict for Final Fantasy XV, maybe? Um, it's, uh, it's unfocused and it's fragmented and I wish it were simpler. <laughs> That's fair. John? Yeah. Uh, for me, I'd say it's probably the best Final Fantasy game in the last eight years. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. technically, technically correct because yeah. I think it's the only one. Uh, yeah, but probably. I mean, I, um, I actually think Final Fantasy fourteen is better, but say the uh, I, I, Does that count? Really? Those are MMOs, dude. No, yeah, dude. Final Fantasy Those... fourteen was legit. Final Fantasy, come on. It's, it was okay, but it should have never been, in my opinion, a mainline entry. That should have been like Final Fantasy colon the MMO or something. Yeah, like Crystal Chronicles. Sure, yeah, like yeah. A side thing. Um, uh, so what did you final, do? What was my your final, final verdict yeah. is uh, Final Fantasy XV, a uh, food and road trip simulator. Yeah, basically. That's the best way to play this. That's its strengths. Just play it that way. Ignore ignore all the fucking nonsense with the story and just play yeah. it as a road trip simulator. Yeah. Um Final Fantasy 15. It's very flawed, but it's good to look at. It's got tasty food. I, mm-hmm. I still think it's worth a playthrough, especially if you haven't played too many Final Fantasy games. Yeah. Final Fantasy 15. It's better than 13. Uh, true. Uh, that is factually, scientifically proven. <laughs> uh, play it and know that it is not at all representative of what any other Final Fantasy game is like. True. But um, it might be representative right. of what every Final Fantasy is like going forward. So look forward to uh, that. Let's hope not. Let's hope <laughs> not. Unless unless they actually remake that game and give me the road trip game. Because I legit want that game. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Our top five for this is uh, we, we were going to do our top five favorite Final Fantasy games. But John just simply has not played enough games in the series. So maybe we'll do that at some point in the future, you know. The very contentious classic debate of which Final Fantasy is best. But instead, oh, yeah. we are going to do our top five Final Fantasy characters. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Leo, why don't you kick us off? All right, sure. Um, my number five is um, a lesser known character, probably. But James, you're going to be pretty familiar with him. It's going to uh-huh, be yeah. Ramza Beuv. Oh, nice. He Good is pick. the main protagonist for this Final Fantasy Tactics uh, game. Yeah, um, Tactics uh, was a game that was way too difficult for me to play in my youth, but I still enjoyed just the atmosphere, the knights and the gallantry and the, you know. Yeah. And, and Ramza, Ramza was kind of all that in a character. I mean, he was like honorable. He's got like the long hair and I don't yeah. know. He's just a badass who stuck to his... Uh, to his uh, code and yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very Leo game. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. Swords and knights and classes. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Classic. So yeah. Ramza, Ramza Beulv. 
My number five uh, is from a game I play. So, as you guys, you already mentioned, James, I've only played a limited amount of characters. There are games yeah. from Final Fantasy. Yep. <laughs> so, is is your top five going to be the four main characters of fifteen plus Cindy? <laughs> no, um, I have some from the games I do play, but then okay. there is some okay. in the list that are just based right. off, basically off of the character design and how they look. Okay. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Just base it purely off character design. I like that. Yeah. Um, so my, as that being said, my number five is Lulu from Final Fantasy X. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tell me about what you like about Lulu, John. Uh, Lulu is an interesting character because a lot of the, like my, uh, my understanding is a lot of the characters are these younger teenage people that to be more relatable to the younger crowd. And Lulu is like this more older person and mm-hmm. she's got this really cool gothic look about her and she has mm. the, like the best summons in FF10 is my understanding. Mm. Nope. Nope. She's not a summoner, but you know. Or she's got the best spells. She's got the best. There you go. Something. Yeah. Yep. yep she's yep, got yep. the best um, something. I'll tell you. <laughs> she's. Uh, she definitely has the best something. <laughs> so yeah, there's my number five. The best pair of something. Oh yeah. Um, my number five. Uh, I, I. 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 For my top five, I tried to do one from uh, each of different games. Uh, I don't have any repeat games on my list. Mm-hmm. Uh, having having said that, I'm not a big Final Fantasy IV guy, but I went with Cecil from Final Fantasy IV, and I went with Cecil for this reason. Um, I think Final Fantasy IV, and specifically Cecil as the char- as a character, um, paved the way for a lot of what Final Fantasy became in the future. Um, and specifically why I find Cecil interesting is uh, Final Fantasy IV is one of the first games that they tried to make this big, epic, sweeping story, and they tried to really, you know, um, flesh out these characters instead of just having them be, you know, just stats and a class, you know, and a list of weapons or whatever. They, you know, gave the characters names and tried to give them backstories and, you know, all that stuff. And the really interesting thing they did with Cecil is they mirrored his character development to the gameplay. So if you remember Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy IV uh, Cecil begins as like this dark knight yeah. who's serving this kingdom. Badass. And uh, and the king is having him do all these like really questionable things. So uh, he's like, oh yeah, go 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 kill everybody in this village. This and Cecil's village. like, he's like well, I don't know about this king. Yeah. So Cecil starts having second uh, second guesses about this kingdom he's serving. Anyway, he realizes that the king's been lying to him. The king's evil. So he renounces his, uh, whatever, knighthood or whatever. Uh, Anyway, about halfway through the game, he uh, goes through this big, like, atonement thing where he has to, like, atone for all of the dark deeds that he's done. And he gives up being a dark knight and becomes a paladin, Mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, from a character development standpoint, like, shows you that he's grown as a character and he's, like, atoned for the things that he's done in the past. But there's this big gameplay shift where you lose all of the Dark Knight abilities that you had. Right. And you're like, oh, shit. But then you, you like, start over as a paladin, which if by the end of the game, your paladin class becomes a, a lot stronger than what you started the game with as a Dark Knight. But That's an inter- um, interesting it's, transition there. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because Cecil undergoes this big character change where he also, his moveset totally changes. Right. And Final Fantasy IV did a lot of this. Like, Tella has this whole thing where he's, like, trying to remember uh, this one spell he used to be able to cast. And he has, like, amnesia or whatever. And he can't remember how to cast Meteo. Uh, and, but the gameplay function of that is Meteo is always on your spell list. It's like grayed out. You just don't have enough. It's grayed out. You just don't have enough MP to cast Meteo. Yeah. But it's, like, a really cool, like, little nod to what they're building in the character story. It's almost like, anyway. like, the char- like the game engine itself is helping be a part of, tell a part of the story. You know? Exactly. Uh, which is something I find really interesting and cool and something Final Fantasy hasn't really done a lot of, like, after 4. I mean, they they sort of experiment a little with it with with Garnet and 9. But anyway, it's it's a really interesting concept with Cecil that they developed and then promptly threw away for the rest of the series yeah but i like i like the development the cecil goes through yeah it's a good pick um my number four speaking of uh development uh i think is uh one of the characters that i guess has the most interesting one of the most interesting story arcs um is vivi from uh, final fantasy 9 Ooh, nice uh, yeah yeah hell yeah just a really just a really interesting character uh also just because like We've always seen kind of up until Final Fantasy IX, 
the the speechless sort of black mage characters from you know previous iterations of final fantasy mm-hmm. and it's the first time you see like a walking talking you know black mage as a part of your your group and it's also kind of this mystery behind vivi and um you know the, the history of this character and um and ultimately as you play the game you get to learn a lot more about vivi's backstory and um how it came to be that you know he was alive and well or is it he or she i'm actually not i think about it he is a he, right? he, is yeah. a he. um yeah. it's kind of like gender agnostic to me um but Anyway, yeah, really interesting character, uh, and just a really cool story to see, like all the way to the end of FF Nine. Yeah, great pick, mm-hmm. John. Nice. Uh, my number four is uh, again just a character design pick here, but uh, it's Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy VII, mm. and apparently nice. he's an optional character. Mm. But, he is. Uh, yeah, he, his red and black look uh, seems pretty cool. Um, and that's all I can say about him. <laughs> he does have a yeah, cool you should look. play seven. Uh, he does have a very good character design. You should play seven. He's, he's a, he's a pretty, he's a cool dude. I find it uh, interesting. You can go the whole game without playing, like running into him. And yes. Playing yeah. him. Mm, you can never find him at all. Yeah. Uh, my number four is also a cool pick. I don't think any of the rest of my, I don't know, maybe they are, but this is definitely my cool pick, which character is cool. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, from Final Fantasy X, Oren. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I quite like Final Fantasy X. I, despite all of the um, problems with its presentation, because like obviously that's a game that has like laughably bad like costume design and voice acting and voice direction and the anyway whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, Oren's coolness like comes through all of that shit, right? Um, because I find most of the cast of Final Fantasy X to be on a sliding scale between, like, forgettable and fucking insufferable. Uh, <laughs> like, I cannot stand Titus. Right. I, yeah, I just terrible. hate... I I want to punch Titus he's, right in the fucking teeth. He has a very teeth. punchable face. He does. <laughs> but Oren um, is a like, total badass. Right. He somehow in the in this game filled with like goofy fucking clown costumes and like terrible voice acting, somehow we have like a cool dude character. Yeah. Uh he's like this like old style like samurai yeah. guy, but he's he's got a lot of mystery. He's got he's he's missing an eye. Mm-hmm. He's only got one eye and he's, he's like wearing these like ass. mysterious sunglasses yeah. and like He's got this giant fucking ass samurai sword yeah. and he carries his arm like in a sling sometimes. Yeah, 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 I was like, yeah. oh, he's got like this this arm injury, which I like looked it up into that. Uh, apparently he doesn't have an he's arm injury injured. at all. That's yeah, he's, uh, just, he's just that. No, cool. it's well, yes, uh, uh, it's a, a samurai affectation because apparently like ancient samurai, if if you are a samurai who did not serve a lord, you wore your arm in your cloak like that. Mm-hmm. Just have your arm dangling like that, which was to signify you were a samurai who did not serve a house. Yeah. And I was like, well, oh, you always knew arm, so arm like, meant business because then, like, he would like take his yeah. coat off and like grab the sword with both hands. And then you're like, oh shit, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Isn't that a yeah. yeah, yeah, a- yeah. Well, yeah, in like all of it. Well, usually in battle, he like takes his hand out of his cloak and grips the sword with two hands. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I really like his we character. Grip my sword with two hands. I really like his character design, and even his voice acting is definitely one of the like less fucking goofy voice acting. Uh, Probably just because he says so few words in that game. Yeah, he's he's very you know uh, yeah. a man of few words. But yeah, yeah. Oren, my cool pick. <laughs> he's the Vincent Valentine of uh, FF10. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's my number three. So you've already. Oh yeah. I was I was kind of now I was kind of jumping with you on that one because yeah he's a badass and he's my number three pick. Ah, all um, right, all right. Uh, am I going for number three right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, good because uh, my number three is for, uh, Aranea Highwind, and she's from Fifteen, mm-hmm. which is the game we spent oh, most okay. of the podcast talking about. Yep, and I uh, actually think she looks cool too, but uh, her story is really interesting. She's probably one of the more interesting characters from Fifteen because. Uh, I don't know how far you played Leo, but she's basically one of the main villains that you first encounter in the game. Gotcha. Uh, but then she becomes your ally in one of the chapters and like the interaction she has with the rest of the party is so fluid and organic. It's like really cool. Like you kind of wish you can keep her in your party most of the time for the rest of the game. 
And um, <clears throat> if you read online about uh, like, I guess the game decision to put her in your, your in your party, mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of people agree that she's really cool. And I think there's like a the, the uh, developers released a whole chapter uh, around Aranea. Nice. So um, she was she was like the dragoon, uh, like knight lancer lady, right? Yeah, she was like the general person yeah. too for like yeah. the military of the other civilization yeah. uh, or the yeah. other kingdom. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's really that her dynamic when she switches sides is really interesting because it was like a it was like a play to the morality of what each kingdom stood for. So it wasn't mm-hmm. like just an arbitrary switch like that you see in other games when characters switch sides. And it like felt really organic and really cool in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number three is Final Fantasy VII's Cloud. Um, for me, Final Fantasy VII, the, um, I, I, I like a lot of the characters and a lot of the character building. But for me, the like character building and developing c- kind of takes a backseat to that game's overall like overarching narrative and story. Uh, and I love the different story beats that go on in seven, um, especially a lot of the like mystery, like who, like who is Sephiroth? Like how, how is, you know, what's Sephiroth doing? What's his motivations? Like, why is he trying to destroy the planet? And I love that cloud is kind of the lens through which you view this, like, larger story and then um cloud also has this well uh i guess slight spoilers for seven uh, everyone's played final fantasy seven right Who hasn't? um <laughs> except John. uh C- cloud kind of has this mysterious backstory kind of sorta uh at the beginning of the game he you know gives he gives what he gives his backstory but a lot of the, his friends that he's had for a long time are like what what the hell are you talking about cloud? Like, that's definitely not what fucking happened. Like <laughs> that is not what happened to you. That's not who you are. Like, why do you keep saying all these things that never happened? Why do you, why do you, why are you pretending to be somebody you're not? Um, so there gets to be this weird, like uh, mystery of like why clouds memories don't line up with everyone else's memories. And uh, cloud goes through this whole thing where he has to, you know, rediscover the truth about his backstory and what really happened to him. And, I, I really enjoy all the mystery and uh, whatever that 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 goes on with Cloud. Uh, yeah, I am also at time of recording. The trailer for the remake just the second trailer for the remake just dropped, and I am anxiously awaiting to see what this game will become. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it will ever. I, it will that whatever that game is going to be is never going to be as good as the original Final I mean, Fantasy VII. Of course, it, yeah. right. But it's going to be cool I'm just so, to see I, the characters. I know, and I know. And I'm just dying to see like what the fuck they do with it. Uh, it's like if if like it's like what happens if like George Lucas gets a second chance at m- making a new hope? Like there's no fucking way it's going to be as good as the original, a new hope, but right. like, I just want to see what it is. Like what, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm very excited for final fantasy seven remake. Mm-hmm. Um, in the same vein as uh, cloud, uh, my number two character goes to a final fantasy seven character slot. Uh, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen uh-huh. Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, uh, yep. do watch it because Tifa Lockhart is fabulous mm. in that mm. in that uh, mm-hmm. you know, rendition of that world. Um, basically, I want to marry Tifa Lockhart. Um, Whoa. She is gorgeous. She's powerful. She knows mm. martial arts. She like she does. takes care of people too. Like she's a very mm-hmm. caring and motherly sort of yeah. you know, personality. Uh, but also is like, don't mess with me because I'll deck you in the face and knock you out. And yeah. To me, it's like give me a strong, powerful brunette, and I'm you know yeah. I'm head over heels. So yeah. Are you are you dying to see what Tifa is going to look like in remake? I would love to see just them copy paste Tifa Lockhart from Advent Children. I think it'd be perfect. <laughs> just all the polygons and just mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. just exactly. And yeah, please, yeah. please bring back the leather suit. The leather oh, suit. Boy. What? She's that's what she's wearing in a uh, Advent, Advent Children. Children. She's got the badass uh, like leather like, like Morpheus. A, is it like a? 
skin oh, tightly. Yeah, texture. I forgot. No, it's about more like that. kind of trench yeah. coaty, you know, but it has like a nice yeah. sort of tight midsection to that cups her exquisite breasts, you know. Mm. <laughs> she's got the leather yep. gloves on, and for her yep. fighting, yep. it's it's just it's, right. she's the whole deal. She's the whole package. Mm. What you got, John? Uh, so for my number two, you already talked about him a bit, James. It's Oren. From Final Fantasy oh, Fantasy. nice. Okay, cool. And yeah, I think like you were saying, uh, his character design is like way different from everyone else in the game, in, in at least in ten. And uh, he comes across as serious. I, I, I've played a bit of ten, and I played the sequence uh, in the beginning of the game where you play as him. And mm-hmm. He comes across as like super serious, super cool, and it's a complete contrast, like you were saying, to Titus, who's just really annoying and like his. <laughs> I could tell that t- like him. what they wanted to do with Titus was develop him as like maturity wise, and like like I didn't want to deal with that. I just wanted to deal with the story. So, um, Oren fighting Jack was kind of cool, and uh, yeah, I want to finish the game just to see where that plays out. Yep. My number two is uh, Ramza Biolv from Final Fantasy hey. Tactics. Uh, there's a little overlap. Um, uh, so we've talked a lot about Game of Thrones um, uh, on this podcast. I, I've always compared Final Fantasy Tactics to Game of Thrones in that they are both yeah. like these high high fantasy settings with um, knights and you know magic and whatever. But like also they are the same in that. Uh, there's all these like families and houses yeah. and yeah. Th- both games have a gajillion like characters, mm-hmm. like main characters that you are expected mm-hmm. to always remember. Like, who is this person again? You're like, right. the game's like, you know, you remember this guy from like five chapters ago, right? Like both, right. both back. Yeah. Both of those like pull that same sort of stuff. And I'm like, wait, 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 is he working with him as whatever, whatever. And they both have political intrigue. Yeah, very much. And I mm-hmm. almost put, uh, Delita on this list instead Ooh. of Ramza. Uh, okay. If 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 we're comparing this to Game of Thrones, Delita is very much Littlefinger, and yeah. Ramza is either Ned Stark or Jon Snow, Snow or whoever. Yeah, he's very Jon um, Snow. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that both Ramza and Delita, for the most part in the game, are working towards the same. Ah, uh, kind of, sort of working towards the same goals, but. Delita is very much Littlefinger, like, I'll lie, I'll cheat, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm going to double cross everybody, I'm going to pit everybody against each other, you know, just trying to climb the ladder and, uh, you know, escalate his own agenda. And Ramza is very much stick to his beliefs, stick to his morals, like, even if it means betraying, or not betraying, but like, even if it means going against his friends, even if it means going against his family, like... On even if it fault. means, yeah, even if it means like p- people are like labeling Ramza as a traitor, as a heretic, as like, and like right. even in the world of Final uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, like in the world of Ivalis, like Ramza has been forgotten by history. He's like a footnote because uh, like uh, he he basically uh, just he forgoes all of his like you know his title his. Cause he comes from a noble family and he's like, no, fuck all of that shit. I just want to do what's right. You know, what's good. Uh, he's, he's very much Jon Snow or Ned Stark. That's why Leo, I like number one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot. I'm yeah. Not. The okay. best one, the best one. Here we number go. This is one. It. This is the best. Uno. Yeah, baby. James hates him, but I, I love do. him. What? He is Squall Leonhardt. I don't hate him. I, he's just kind of a dopey emo kid. He is. He really is. <laughs> Here's the deal. Yeah. I think he's the only Final Fantasy character that has a lion represent him. That's and cool. My yeah. name means lion, and my name's Leo, and he's Leonhardt. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we're, we're, I want to be Squall. If I was in a fantasy, like, you know, setting, I would be Squall. You know, just a badass kind of loner dude. He's got a cool look, but he's like, don't mess with me. But he's also like fantastic in battle, you know, and like almost like unrivaled except for his only rival. But, you know, yeah, he's he's basically the chosen one and and uh, kind of like demeanor, you know, and, and he's, just a, he's just a badass dude. He's just like, he's a guy that you would try to befriend and he's just going to be too cool 
too cool for you. <laughs> I don't know. He's like also not that because he's like a super dope. He's he has no idea what he's doing. He doesn't know how to talk to girls. He doesn't no, well, that's know. That's with girls. That's with girls. Everyone, everyone well, has to also, have a character he doesn't, flaw. He doesn't know how to lead a team. He's always like, I don't want no, this. No, he please. does. He just doesn't no, he want doesn't. it. He's no, like Jon Snow. <laughs> he doesn't I want guess. the throne, but he's I good guess. for it. I mean, the interesting thing about eight is you get to like char- characters' thoughts are um, like text bubbles pop up of like characters' thoughts, so you get to see yeah. what characters are thinking. And you always see Squall is like, like, please don't. I don't want to lead. I just, I don't, I don't want any of this. Like, please don't, yeah. please don't. I think like, that's yeah. kind of like why I relate to him a lot because uh-huh. you know I, I I'm kind of an introvert and. Um, I consider myself to be actually a decent leader because because I, I actually listen to people and, and I'm empathetic. But mm-hmm. it's also one of those things like in my head I, when I'm talking to people, I'm like, oh, God, please don't talk to me. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like sometimes duty is heavier than a mountain, you know, uh, yeah. and, and that's that's kind that's a quote. Saying. Some, some heavy quote duty. From, very heavy I, bl- duty. I forget which general. Du- duty is heavier than a mountain, and death is lighter than a feather. And uh-huh. they, they use it a lot in uh, Wheel of Time. So uh-huh. go read Wheel of Time. Uh, okay, there you go. Leo's number one is Wheel of Time. <laughs> yeah, it all comes back to Wheel of Time. <laughs> what you got, John? No. Uh, so speaking of really cool guys that are too cool for school, uh, uh-huh. my number one character is Sephiroth from Final Fantasy. VII. Oh, yeah, very. He's very yeah. cool. He's he's extremely cool. He's so I have a thing know, for cool, crazy. Cool, cool sword guys, guy, cool guys with swords, and Sephiroth uh-huh. is the cool sword guy. To he is a cool sword guy. He, he's the coolest sword guy of them all. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, like he's like this ultimate badass. And <clears throat> my real experience with him is like from the Kingdom Hearts games. But I, I played a bit of F- FF7, and he's kind of like that ultimate badass in that game as well. And... Uh, mm. He's just like, like I guess as a character, he's just like, oh, like I guess like he's so OP from the beginning that like you can't even know how OP he is, right? Like that's just like how cool he is. Like he's not just OP that he one shots you. He's just so OP he doesn't even like need to fight you kind of, kind of deal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's he's fun. a very he's a very cool sword guy. I don't know. Um, I, he always comes across as kind of a nut job to me. Yeah, he definitely has like a weird like god complex where he, right. uh, yeah, um, yeah. I think a lot of Final Fantasy villains kind of have that where like <laughs> they're on a like scale between like god complex and like full on fucking crazy, which kind of makes them unrelatable. We could uh, talk about top five Final Fantasy villains, but, but that's probably oh, god, what that's, makes him really good as a villain right because like mm-hmm. we talked about the bad villain in in 15 which is like oh, this he's guy terrible, who yeah. has yeah. no story or context and he just shows no, up yeah sephiroth like, knows what he's about for sure yeah yeah yes. exactly yeah yeah that's true he has that going for him my number one is vivi from final fantasy 9 uh oh, right. vivi vivi is the fucking best man yeah dude. uh Gives i me the feels just thinking about him i love vivi i i love um he has like the deepest okay so vv i think is supposed to be like i I, they give everyone's ages at the beginning of the game i think vv is like six or seven or eight years old Mm -hmm. um and like vv has like the like some of the most serious and heaviest character moments throughout the whole game Oh, yeah. Um so Vivi is a black mage and in the world of Final Fantasy 9 black mages are manufactured like artificial intelligence beings that are manufactured weapons of war uh but like the weird thing in Final Fantasy 9 is that some of these like artificial weapons have become self-aware and that includes Vivi and He's also like this weird prototype weapon. So he's like way younger than all of the other black mages, or at least his body is supposed to be way younger than all of the other black mages. So it's really interesting um, how like viewing the world through Vivi's eyes, because like you'll go into a town and everyone would be like, oh, fuck no, get that black mage out of here right fucking now. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, well, I don't want to hurt anybody. Like so I, I'm, yeah. 
I haven't done anything. Like, I, why are you yelling? And yeah. they're like, I don't know. Fuck no, dude. So it's this weird sort of thing where you almost experience racism through, like, a kid's eyes. Yeah. Because, like, like, everyone is just like, oh, fuck no, black mages, get the fuck out. Like, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. And also, the other thing that, <laughs> that makes Vivi's character really interesting is uh, in the world of Final Fantasy IX, these black mages... Uh, they're made for weapons of war and they're designed with a limited lifespan. So the normal black mage only lives for like two or three years or something like that. Right. And then uh, when Vivi finds this out, he's like, oh shit. So I've got like a couple years soon. left. Yeah. I have like a couple years left. So like I'm going to die soon. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting. Like also experiencing like his thoughts on death But he's also, like, a kid. So, like, you're watching a kid struggle with, like, both this intense racism and also, like, this existential dread of, like, oh, I'm going to die. I might just die, like, all of a sudden. Uh, But he's also, but also he's, like, a kid. So he's, like, like, really joyful all the time. I don't know. Vivi's the fucking best. It's super deep. It really is. He is. He is the fucking best character in all of Final Fantasy. I yeah, love I, Vivi. I would put him in my top three, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Or, or did I say four before? I think it was I top don't. Four. I can't. You're going to have to listen back to this episode. I don't <laughs> know if he was in your top three or four. Uh, yeah, those are some pretty good Final Fantasy characters. Yeah, man, um, for sure. That was a good top five. Um, what do we have to endorse? Uh, Leo, go ahead. Um how do I say this? Um, I want to endorse a show. Okay. But I'm at a bit of a crossroads with this series. Is it Game of Thrones? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're watching the, the final couple of episodes of Game of Thrones. It's been a journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I read the books after starting The Wheel of Time and was recommended um, Song of Ice and Fire from someone who's also read Wheel of Time. When I found out there was a show coming, it was, you know, this whole major hype. And that was like 11 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's a fantastic series. It's got a lot of amazing characters and, and surprises. And they do things that a lot of shows haven't done before. Um, it's just so far the ending has been sometimes it's just one of those things like you wonder if it's just because it's ending maybe there's no good way to end it i think um, that's exactly what it is but i don't know yeah. i don't i don't know that that's completely true because i feel like i'm i'm going to wait to see how george r r martin ends it compared to the show yeah. because i He's just feel like there's better it, dude. Ones. Well, he's I'm, not going to end it even if he just leaves some notes and someone else ends it i just think it, it okay, can be gotcha, done yeah. better than what i think is happening now so so I, I want to endorse the show overall. Yeah. Uh, I guess just, you know, be ready for kind of a lackluster final season. Yeah. John, what you got to endorse? Um, I had it in my mind and I lost it. Mm. Was it oh, Game of Thrones? Yes, I remember now. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about Game of Thrones. I was just going to tell oh, yeah, you, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's mostly about the journey and not the destination. And I don't think any series has like a, classic ending where you can go that's the most best way you can end anything breaking like bad had the greatest ending in the history of television series uh, it was a good ending but i don't think that was like a killer ending to a really it was great it series. was fair it was a it was just a well-written ending like it was it made sense yeah <laughs> i i guess then we still have an episode left Final Fantasy 15 is all about the journey and not the ending. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, there's true. a lot of no, there is a lot of things like that. I get that. I just feel like Game of Thrones was it should have been more. It should have been one of the ones that was able to end in a fair like in a way that made sense, kind of like Breaking Bad. You know? Right. Right. It's mm-hmm. like it, it fell short of its landing. No. I guess. Uh so for my endorsement, um it's a game that we've or not weave but it's been mentioned on the podcast before and i'm just now getting into uh it's yakuza zero and yeah uh, baby <laughs> uh yeah i you know i know james has talked about it a lot outside of the podcast and uh so has zach and um i don't know it, it's one of those things that you i think 
you have to play for yourself. You have to experience it for yourself to really like get what it's about. And um, like, I guess James and Zach did a pretty good job, you know, just getting my foot in the door and bring it, bring it to my attention. But uh, the story is really good. Um, it's really uh, like the gameplay itself is super unique. And that's something I'd admire about like games these days. Cause like a lot of AAA games seem to be kind of the same thing rehashed, but like Yakuza Zero delivers something so unique and different that, uh, yeah, it's really good. You're growing up so much, John. <laughs> a lot what of AAA games are, are, you know, are what did you just say? A lot of AAA games do are re- the same are thing? rehashing Rehashed, the same things. Like, over dude, over. who is this guy, man? He's <laughs> he's growing up so much. He used to be like, oh man, have you checked out the new Call of Duty? You know, dude, the, the, see, I it, well, Call of Duty that oh, okay, it, it came okay. out. Hold on. When it, when <laughs> it came I take out, it all it was, back. It was unique, but yeah, no, Call of Duty nowadays is like the same thing times ten, right? Like, yeah, man, you can't, you're, you can't you're starting to see. <laughs> you're starting to see the problem with AAA I, games. I, I do have bad news. Yakuza is kind of a double edged sword in in that. There are whatever seven games in that series, and all of them are kind of the same, the same. thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yakuza Zero is so far the best version of that. Uh, I just started playing Kiwami Two. Kiwami Two is is pretty good so far, but I am most excited for Judgment, which uh, is coming out next month. Technically not in the Yakuza series, but still takes place in the same fictional universe. So it still takes place in the fictionalized Japan Kamurocho that uh, Yakuza does, um, and obviously by the same development studio. Uh, so if you haven't played any of the Yakuza games, either start with Zero or wait until next month and pick up Judgment. Uh, I'm comfortable endorsing that game based on what I've seen of the Japanese gameplay. Uh, it is out in Japan right now. It looks like if Yakuza um, had a baby with uh, L.A. Noir. Because uh, it's very much, it's a very much a detective story. Okay. Uh, it it's not as much, not as much focused on like the organized crime, the yakuza, and like martial arts. But it's a little more like a detective, like trying to solve these series of. I don't. I mean, I don't know too much about it because I was watching it in Japanese and I don't speak Japanese. But uh, you gotta get. I can that. tell. I could tell a lot of it was um, very L.A. Noir-ish that you have to very much be paying attention to the story and uh, no, I don't know. It, it, it fictionalizes being a detective as best a video game can. Uh, I, so I will endorse, um, hey, keep your eyes on Judgment next month. Uh, I'm very excited for that game. I'm also going to endorse, we've been talking a lot about uh, Game of Thrones for some reason on this episode, (laughs) and if you like Game of Thrones and Final Fantasy, uh, which I'm assuming you probably like Final Fantasy because you're listening to this episode, and if you've enjoyed us listen talk about Game of Thrones, uh, anyway, if you, for some fucking reason, if you haven't (laughs) played Final Fantasy Tactics... I I'm getting way too wordy with my like introduction to things. <laughs> I I just like talk myself into a stupor. I like you talk yourself into confusion. Yeah, into I do. Corner. I do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, play Final Fantasy Tactics, you bitches. Do okay. it. You <laughs> yeah. you fucking bitches. Play Final Fantasy Tactics. It's a great game. It's <laughs> no no offense to the women listeners of the show. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, we're all bitches. No, um, yeah, it's true. Uh, it and bitches is bitches ain't snitches. That's what I hear. That's uh, that's what the people say. Um, it's it's very much the world building. A lot of the world building and a lot of the uh the themes are in line with Game of Thrones. A lot of the characters have analogs between the two series. Um, a lot I'm of them expecting are... as much gore or nudity though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, or there's sex. no nudity. Uh, there's no nudity or sex. If there but, was uh, a mature version of Final Fantasy Tactics, though, with nudity and gore, that would sell really well. Uh, yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> if you want Final Fantasy crossed with Game of Thrones, Final Fantasy Tactics is your game. It is 
probably one of if not the best written final fantasy game oh uh, for sure yeah uh just the the story and a lot of the characters in that game are fucking phenomenal uh, uh the gameplay just, is also great yeah um you know just spoiler alert for the one day that we will cover top five favorite final fantasy games it yeah. may or may not be on my list yeah who knows yeah oh it's definitely in my top five absolutely it might, it might be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's, a, it's a good one that game to me before like, well, I've been trying to get you to play any other Final Fantasy, any of uh, them. Yeah, to be fair, John, you've never asked me which game, which Final Fantasies yeah. I think you should play. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. the tough the tough sell with tactics is there's not a, a super great... Uh, there's not a super great way to play it <laughs> uh, because there's not a... The best version of that game is the War of the Lions version, which is only available on... Android, iOS, and PSP. Uh, so don't <laughs> don't play any of those on their native hardware because this is not a great mobile game. You definitely want to sit down, like in front of your TV, and like you know, really think about your turns and your tactics and everything. This is, by the way, this is as the title suggests. This is absolutely a tactical strategy game. Uh, I the best way I could recommend to play it is. If for some fucking reason you have the original PlayStation version, I mean, play that. Or uh, I have if, that. Or great. Or if you have a PSP emulator on your computer, uh, find the War of Find the War of the Lions version of Final Fantasy Tactics and play that. Uh, the only reason I am comfortable endorsing piracy is because Square Enix has not made a better way to play this game. So hey, Square, if you don't want people pirating this game. Then give us a version that we can play on modern hard- hardware that is not my fucking telephone. I don't want to play this game on my phone. My fingers are too big to click on which square I want my units to go to. Uh, <laughs> you can download an Android emulator for your PC and play it on that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Or, or you can do that. Yeah, Android it, or the War of the Lions. What? No, the there's a something. It's like called Blue Blue Stacks. Blue Stacks. Blue Stacks. Okay. Android yes. yeah, Android yeah. emulator. Yeah. Uh, I've also <laughs> used PPSSPP, I'm pretty sure is the name of the PSP emulator. Wow. Uh, yeah. That so, was way too many peepees in there. I know. There's, oh, there's any peepees is too many peepees. That's true. Uh, so yeah, that's my endorsement. And I think that's going to be this, uh, episode, right? Yeah. It's a All long right. one. Yeah, it was a long one. Well, we talked about Game of Thrones for way too long. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. uh this kind of how it is in the world in the in the game of thrones you either win or your podcast is too long <laughs> <laughs> yep those are the two outcomes um mm-hmm. and hey you guys we didn't win <laughs> what, what do you say to a short podcast not today. uh not today not today <laughs> um so for the way too long podcast uh good games podcast that was terrible. For the Good Games Podcast, I am James. <laughs> I'm Leo. And I'm John. And we'll see you next time. See Goodbye. Ya. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, man. It's all CGI. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so uh 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 season what what, what, episode five of season eight of Game of Thrones uh just aired. Uh John believes just just spoke to me and believes that the fucking echo in his setup is terrible. But he believes that the I oh my god, I, I keep hearing my own voice shouting back into my ears. Yeah, um, it's like a monitor. You should try lowering your voice, dude. You're like... You should try headphones! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Calm down. Uh, 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 John, I, I want you to defend the, the special effects and the cinematography in uh, episode 5, season 8 of Game of Thrones. They were terrible. Okay, like, can you give me examples of, like, the worst stuff? Because Well, I yes, thought- yes.
Yes, I can. Um, first of all, like every single scene that was like shot, clearly shot against green screen looked awful. There was this weird like dithered, like everyone had this weird like blurry dithered outline it's where they CGI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Where, where, where you could tell they had to like blend away the green screen. It looked awful. Like it was like the most obvious, like the color grading wasn't even right. Like the characters were like so clearly didn't belong in the backgrounds that were like in the background that were like green screened in that looked awful. And then in like the battle scenes, like th- they're like, Oh, let's do uh let's like show how chaotic it is. And then they switch from like whatever movies are normally shot at or TV show, like 24 FPS or whatever. They switch to like this weird, like 10 FPS. And then they just do shaky cam. Like, ugh, that like that, made that's me pretty standard of action movies, though. Yeah, but they went on with that. It's tropey. Forever. It's tropey. It, that's yeah, the it, looked, thing. it looked terrible, though. It was bad. It was very bad. I will say this: the dragon breath was cool. Dragon that's breath about, was great. That, that was, that was that, great. That's what yep. I liked. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That was fine. That was fine. Just the green screening and the way the like, ah, uh, the like frame rate they chose to shoot a lot of the chaotic battle scenes, where it was like. It felt like a strobe light was on, you know, where you see like every other frame. I don't know. It was bad. Yeah, they just slow down the, the FPS. I mean, yeah. my my whole problem with the episode, uh, yeah. is it's just like that on top of just like the shitty tropey writing yeah. and like, okay, I don't, explain to me this. Explain to me this. Yeah. 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 First of all, how did all the characters decide that we're just going to forget about the Iron Fleet and try to fly over? the ocean and then get shot at by two dragons like but but everybody was like oh yeah this should be fine there's nobody there that's going to be waiting for us even though they were just talking about how she has the iron fleet now they're like oh screw that so then danny gets a a dragon shot out and has to flee that battle but somehow in this battle with more scorpions along the walls and everything then having the one dragon is a-okay no problem i I don't think i think what they were trying to show there is that like daenerys had I think, this is my speculation, I think what they were trying to show there was the, like, Daenerys had adapted to their, like, battle tactics because she was trying to, like, dive bomb straight out of the sky, like, straight down. Remember at the beginning of the battle when Euron looks, like, directly up into the sun and, like, he, like, is trying to shade his eyes and Daenerys is coming straight down at him? I think that was like, aha, I figured it out. Like, I just have to, like, dive bomb the fleets and then they can't hit me because either they can't re... They can't reposition the ballistas to like point that high, or they can't see into the sun, or something. I don't know. Maybe it, it just felt rushed. Uh, yeah, no, no, no I agree. Rushed. I agree. I agree. I agree. I uh, agree. Uh, yeah, it was. It was not good. Uh, also, like there was just like all this like B roll where they just like sh- sh- shot people on fire and like shot. I, it was bad. Like the cinematography yeah. was like bad, bad, bad. It was just cheesy. Anyway, it was just yeah. cheesy to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you want to defend any of this, John? Because we just blasted apart this episode that you said was really good. No, uh, I think the I thought the scene with the Hound was really good when he was fighting his brother. Yeah, the Hound cool. got like the, the only good death. flying over the the keep, red keep. Yeah, it was, was cool. Pretty was dope cool. looking. Yeah, the green screen looked terrible in that scene, but the rest of it was good. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought it looked good as is, but well, the, the thing is, the thing with green screen and CGI is, it's gonna look good if it's a fake, like a, a fake thing. You can make it look decent, like a dragon flying over this fake keep, like that's yeah. generally acceptable. But yeah. it's like no, the, the, the dragon looked fine, except for yeah. the close up shots. There's a couple of close up shots where Daenerys is riding the dragon, where you have like a real live actor against a thing that is yes, fake. And, right. and but that always sometimes, looks weird. yeah, yeah, sometimes those things just don't read real well. But when it's right. a pulled back shot and you're just seeing the dragon fly around, that looks fine. Yeah. But then the yeah, problem was just like the really cheesy effects with like the people on the ground level. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think what exacerbated the whole thing was just the beating of the dead horse. Where like, yeah, okay, it just we get went it. on for way too yeah. long. Oh yeah, yeah that, that, no, yeah. Okay, oh if the God. whole scene lasted like fifteen, you know, twenty, thirty seconds or something at a time, they just kind of showed a little bit of like of the battle or whatever, and then the whole thing was done in a few minutes. You would never have. It wouldn't have mattered so much, but it's the fact that that was like a majority of the episode it was this repetitive, yeah. cheesy bullshit. That's yeah. That's... Did did anyone understand the ending of that episode? I was uh, uh, this season of Game of Thrones. Okay, in the past, Game of Thrones has been a show that has been able to surprise me at some points. This right. season of Game of Thrones, 
I've pretty much called every shot that it, but that's that it's my taken problem. so far. That's why I don't uh, like all the writing. It's like they're yeah, just not yeah, yeah. even they don't they don't have the same level of expertise. Right. I I know. I like I've called every shot of this season so far except for what is is going on with Arya in that last episode? Uh, uh, what? What? Uh, what? Excuse me. What? Well, it was very cheesy, first of all. So that's the part I didn't like about it. Like, okay, oh, sure, she's, yeah. she's getting on the white horse and she's death. I get it. But it was just super. Is that what that was death. supposed to be? It was like a metaphor for now yeah. she's death. Yeah, because, really? now, because she saw all that death, and now she basically Daenerys has jumped to the top of her list, and Arya is basically death incarnate, like going to kill Daenerys probably now. That's the way uh, I took okay. it. Okay. But okay. it was just so cheesy. Like, yeah, why would that really happen? Like, it would not happen that way. Like, I don't some know. pretty heavy-handed biblical. Uh, I don't so, know. Yeah, it was so. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I, it's it, very strange. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know what to make of that last. But they're just like throwing scene. away character arcs completely that they've developed over the last eight years. They're just saying, "Ah, we're done." Like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Take Jamie for example. Jamie Lannister. Okay. Has yeah. they focused so much on this character's development from a douchebag to like a guy who's kind of learning that his place in life, he gets his hand chopped off, it puts him in yeah. his place. He meets Brienne of Tarth, who's like, yeah. you know, this t- totally different person that, than Cersei, falls in love with her, kind of, you know, like doesn't want to admit mm-hmm. it, ends up sleeping with her. And this is like a perfect, like, character development like oh he's become this new person and then it's like a red herring he's going back to like yeah. you think because of he still loves Cersei but it's like it's supposed to be like a red herring so when he gets there you think oh yeah he's a loser but then he just like stabs her and he's like oh that's a well developed character like he's completely become a new person in that time of the- and instead yeah. they're like nope he's literally the same we're just gonna go ahead and hug Cersei and die and like it's just stupid that was-, that was a weird end for Jamie, but also like Jamie and Brienne like riding off into the sunset. Like that's not, that's not yeah. the type of show Game of Thrones is. Like if well, you thought no, that they were, but I mean, if you thought that they were going to have a happy ending, that's you're no, watching the wrong no. show. But but there, I had two problems with both those characters the way they finished them. First, Brienne okay. of Tarth would not cry like a little girl when Jamie left. Okay. Would she be upset? Sure, but she would stand up like a freaking badass knight and be like, you know, angry and stuff. But she was like, <laughs> "You're leaving me." <laughs> it was so out of character for her. That's the first yeah. problem. Second, yeah. I'm okay with Jamie leaving and them not having a happily ever after with Brienne. I get that. Sure. But I think yeah. he should have found, as a character, he should have developed enough to get to Cersei and been like, the reason I'm here is not because, like, I love you want to die with you. It's because I feel yeah. like I'm the one who who has to kill you because we came yeah. in this world together and we should leave together. Yep. Like, yep. And kills her. Like, that would yep. be great. Yeah. 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 But instead, yeah. they no. just kind yeah. of wussy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there's a lot of problems yeah. like that I have with it, like characters yeah. and stuff. The Hound, they did well, though. The Hound was good. That was Yeah, it was fine. A proper, it felt proper. That was fine. I don't know. I'm kind of reserving my judgment until we get this last episode. But uh, yeah, well, it's my, not my, looking good. I I don't need to reserve my judgment if I'm critiquing the cinematography. Like it was ooh, in the last episode. Uh, yeah, the anyway. whole thing was well, just crap. Uh, I'll I'll see if they resolve any of these character arcs. I don't know. Going into this episode, this seemed. Or going into the season, it seemed like an impossible task to like yeah. resolve all of these things neatly. Like, there yeah, was the whole just... thing is going to feel rushed, right? I mean, that's just... uh, yeah, even the whole uh, Winterfell fight is as cool as it was to see it the way it was. It just it it felt kind of anticlimactic in how sudden everything ended, you know? Yeah, yeah. With the Night King and everything, like the whole yeah. show, we're led to believe this is like a major issue, and it's like, nope, we're done. <laughs> yeah, but I'm s- I agree with you, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad because i find the night king and the idea of the night king to be kind of uninteresting like i'm glad that wasn't the last battle you know well it was uninteresting because it was because they made it uninteresting like i felt like you could have my my big problem is not necessarily the writing or the story it's the pacing like they spent way too long on things that don't count and way too short on things that probably needed more explaining well and maybe that's what makes it feel weird it's because like the things that they've invested like so much time into Mm -hmm. they're wrapping up in like an episode and it just doesn't feel correct and then the things that they're they're trying to create things now like daenerys becoming kind of the mad queen i get it if that's where you want to take that character i totally get it yeah but i felt like they did it in like three episodes and it's like yes yeah it's like hacking like it's not you know i mean there, there are there are there are like 
little signs of that over yeah. the whole series. But yeah. I agree with you that that moment doesn't quite feel earned when she... It doesn't she, feel like, earned, right. Yeah, right. when she starts burning the city, you're like... I, you're like, I mean, oh, I, it's kind of a stretch. I, I guess, but that's a little bit of a stretch, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's my problem. Is like, I totally get Daenerys becoming Mad Queen, but it's like, it, you just did yeah. it wrong. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done poorly. Yeah. Anyway, so we can just cut this entire 12 minutes. Oh, away. no. I'm putting this either at the beginning or the end, whatever. Welcome to the Good Games cast where we talk about Game of Thrones. Good Game of we, Thrones. We, yeah, we are now a Game of Thrones podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the Good Game of Thrones cast. <laughs>